All right, before we move forward, I wanted to show the heads up display stats. I exchanged an email with Check Razor. Here we have them. Um, total VPIP, total preflop raise. Actually, total raise first in. That's a different stat than preflop raise. Um, raise first in means when they raise when it folds to them. Total three bet and then the M. Next we have total hands, small blind preflop raise. So basically this is how often the small blind raises when it folds to them. This will let you know if your opponent's playing more of a limping strategy or if they're just raising a lot. But I don't really know if this stat actually gives you very much clean information because imagine you see a small blind raise first in, or small blind preflop raise of, I don't know, 30%. So you know they're raising 30% of the time, but that doesn't really tell you what 30% of hands they're raising. It could be very linear or it could be very polar. Maybe they're raising only the best hands and then also some of the worst hands. Also, maybe they're only raising their best hands. It's very difficult to know what that raising range looks like. Uh, it's very different, a very different scenario than, say, the butt-offs. But, I'm oh, sorry, the, the butt-offs. The button and the cut-offs open raising range because those are usually going to be very linear. You know, you just can't open 9-4 offsuit on the button. It doesn't work. So I'm not so sure this stat is that incredibly relevant. Of course, if you see someone with a small blind preflop raise of 90 or 100, then you know that they're just raising everything and you can exploit them. So I think this is only going to be useful when the number is very high. But I guess what I'm saying is I was told that you try to keep a very simple heads up display. And I'm not sure if this stat is worthy of being on a simple heads-up display. I guess that's all I'm saying. Uh, that being said, I mean, if you find spots where people are raising 100%, then of course you can just crush them. So maybe it is worthy of being on there. Flop C-bet's good. Uh, fold to flop C-bet. Total open limp. That's the number that I didn't know what was ha going on with. And no call last, or NC, I think that means no call last showdown hands. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but we will see. I'm far from a master with stats. Um, let's do one more. Let's skip to another hand where we go to blinds of 40 and 80 and let's see what happens with ace queen on the button here right so a loose player 21 26 26 21 opens 2.5x on in a cutoff and I think I got only one option, and that is to overcall, is to flat. Uh, sorry, to flat. I do not like three betting without any info. Just it it is not necessary to turn my hand into a blob because if once I force, once I face four bet, I don't think I would be too happy without um with it and. The hand is just too strong to uh, three bet fold, and for this reason, it's the best way to just flat. All right, so you mentioned here that you don't want to turn your hand into a bluff by three betting, but I don't really think you're turning it into a bluff. I think this hand is actually fine to get it all in versus a lot of cut uh, cut off razors. Notice here, this guy is pl playing twenty one slash twenty six. It's uh, normally the preflop raise and VPIP are. The preflop raise is always higher, but when it's raised first in, it changes things. Anyway, this guy is opening a decent amount. He is in the cutoff. I imagine three betting this and getting it in is just going to be fine for 50 big blinds. Obviously, it's a lot, and I agree that you don't want that to happen. So I think I would tend to call on this spot as well, but I think this hand is usually good enough to get it all in that being said this is a ten dollar game or sorry a five dollar game so maybe the players in these games do not get it all in very wide so i actually don't think it's that bad to three bet it for value because they're going to be calling with a lot of hands that you dominate and you can then fold if they shove or if you think your opponent's a little bit active and aggressive as you see this guy's playing 20 ish 25 percent of hands give or take a little bit maybe you could be willing to get it all in so um I don't think it's true that you have no information. We certainly do have some hands on this guy, 285 hands. So this is the definition of having information. But um, I don't know. I think you can go either way. I probably would call here, but I think three betting is perfectly fine. The problem with calling this is you have to ask, what is your three betting range here? And what's happening is your three betting range is becoming only ace, king, and then like pocket tens or better. And that's just a very tight three betting range. So it implies you're never or very rarely three betting which means you can't really three-bet bluff a lot. And I would really love to be able to three-bet bluff here a lot. 
So for that reason, I think I want to include ace queen offsuit in my three betting range versus most competent players. So I call and the small blind comes along. Also, if the blinds are very bad, I'd be much more inclined to call as well. If they're good, I'd be much more inclined to three bet. And we are three way to the flop, which is seven, three, six. I got two overs and a backdoor flush draw. Probably sounds like I'm nitpicking on everything, but um, whenever the flop comes out, I always read it high to low. Here it just happens to be high to low, but you said seven, three, six, right? So you did highest card, lowest card, middle card for some reason. And you'll find that if you, or at least it works for me, that if I think from high to low every time, like say the flop is seven, six, three, it just comes out like that. I just sort of rearrange it in my hand as seven, and, and my head is seven, six, three. It's always high to low, you know, queen, jack, four, nine, seven, two. It's never two, nine, seven or something like that because... It makes it more difficult for you to think about everything if you are constantly trying to figure out how your hand fits with the board. So figure out some system that works for you. But I imagine the system that works best for almost everyone does not include highest card, lowest card, middle card. I do not. If if the opener, um, the cutoff, if he is any good, he should not be c butting with too many misses without equity because this flop should be hitting the big blinds range quite a lot. So the worst hand I expect him to see but are hands like 9-10 of spades, jack-10 of spades, ace-10 of spades, basically any two, no, two spades and yeah, that's about it. Flash draws, pairs, that these are hands that it's going to hit him. But once he misses, I think he should not be C-betting. I would not be C-betting in this spot. Okay. I do not see any reason in betting this flop because I either have the best hand or I'm not going to fold out much. I'm not going to fold out any any hands that beat me, I do not think that he's going to fold. This guy is 22 10, so a little bit on the weaker side. And I do not expect him to fold 3x or 6x or any pair to one bet. And I, I could have had a plan barreling because I could barrel um, clubs, but I still like checking back. I think I probably would have bet this flop small. I think this is a spot where if you bet something like 250, you're not going to make the pairs fold like you said, but you could easily get called by worse hands like ace jack, ace 10, maybe random 10 9, stuff like this. And also, you do have good barrel cards, as you said. Also, you have a pretty good amount of equity, even if your opponent does have a pair. And I don't think you really mind getting check raised off your hand. So I think I would have bet this, mainly to make hands like jack 10 fold and to make hands that have some equity fold. Also, Notice on the turn, if you face a bet, you're going to have to fold yourself. So you don't really have any way to protect yourself whenever you check behind on this flop. You're, if your opponent puts money in the pot, if either player puts money in the pot, you just have to lose the hand. So I would definitely bet small on this flop. I think that's a pretty good line. You could have this in your range. The initial preflop raiser almost certainly does not have this in his range. He is almost always giving up. So you're really only worried about one player. So I think you can bet something like 250 or 225, and that's going to get folds a lot of the time. And if this player does check call, it's either with ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack, ace-ten, something like that. So you're probably in okay shape versus that range. So I like a bet. And like you said, you can barrel a lot. If this guy does check call, I think you can be very inclined to barrel him on a lot of turns because he's going to have a lot of ace highs. And maybe bad pairs, but probably not. Let's see what happens. Got six most likely clean outs. Once you get to the turn, I would have checked behind because now you're never making a better hand fold and you can't really get value from any worse hands. Uh, so I, I don't I actually don't think a small bet would be that bad on the turn. I mean, you're going to find that small betting in general is very good just because it forces random hands like, well, ace eight, for example, or queen eight, from queen eight suited, stuff like this. It forces random hands to fold that have some equity that are only going to put money in the pot if they improve. Or, you know, they may even decide to bluff you from time to time and that's going to make you fold. So I, I really do think there's a lot of value in cleaning up the equity. Maybe this is a play that's better against 
higher stake players who are capable of bluffing in these spots. But um, I don't know. I would suggest you experiment with making small bets when they check to you with a reasonably wide range of hands that have some equity. Turns check, opening another another um, flush draw and some straight draws. It checks, gets checked through, and at this point, uh, I don't see any reason in bluffing. So I just get checked down, and I win Dan short. This is a good example of a spot where if the small blind is good, he's going to win this pot a ton. He's going to be betting the turn very frequently. And if he doesn't bet the turn, he's often going to bet the river. But here he just checks and lets you win. Uh, I think a lot of people think that ace high, ace bad ace high has showdown value here, whereas in reality it has virtually none. So this is a spot where I think your opponent made a mistake and let you win this pot. Well done. Which is a good result overall. Right. And notice here that if you bet this flop, this guy may have actually called with the ace five. So you would have extracted some value and he would have probably check, check, turn, check, check river. And then you would have won. Also, you could have decided to bluff the turn. Clearly, you would have made him fold a hand with equity. I doubt he's going to check raise you on the flop if you bet 225. If you start betting like 500, maybe he does decide to check shove because he doesn't think he can call 500 because it you know, looks too big. So I think this is a spot where I, I definitely would have bet. And, you know, maybe you bet the flop and get two callers, then you get even more money in versus people who are drawing pretty thin. So it looks like this was a good result, but I think you really only won this pot because both of these players played their hands somewhat poorly. Let's do last hand, one more hand, which is a turn. The blinds are 60 and 120. We are eight-handed. Sorry, I turned 900, but it doesn't make any huge difference. Gets 40 to me. And as you can see, as the blinds are getting higher, I decrease the race size. I decrease the race size because the pot stack ratio is lower. We are not as deep, so there's no need to open to 3x. Also, I open from, I'm opening here from later, or late position which enables me to open larger amount of hands or more hands so this is the main reason for me choosing or decreasing in race sizing here that all sounds fine to me weird call given this guy's so short I get one call in position and I think that no matter what happens the money will be going in because the pot's going to be about well, seven eight hundred so eight eight fifty I'm going to have pot size bed behind so actually says right here what the current pot is in the middle of the table so I do not see how I can get away from this unless the flop is like exactly three cards three connected cards that I miss I mean, like 765 all diamonds would be bad, for example. Even a hand, I mean, if, if it's two big cards, you always have a gut shot, so you are not trying to fold. If it's um, 987, 986, you have a gut shot, you can't really fold. So really, you're only folding on three very connected low cards that you, where you do not have a gut shot. And even then, I'm not really sure you could get out of the way. Also, here, the money is going to go all in, but that doesn't mean you should just blindly shove every flop. There are a lot of flops you should check. I guess we'll see how it plays out. But if it comes with an ace or a 10... I think you should very often check to try to give this guy every opportunity to bluff or bet very small, like 200. So uh, do not think that you just must blindly shove every flop here. All right, so we get a caller in the middle. So now this this changes things significantly. So now we're much more concerned with this player because we are playing deep stacked versus him. We're not really so concerned with this guy. Say this guy did call, this guy called, and you did not flop a reasonable hand. You should be much more inclined to be in check fold mode because now you have to face two players. So that's a scenario where you have to be a little bit more straightforward. But on this board, I would just bet. I think you need to bet something like, ah, well, what are you trying to have happen? We're trying to get this guy to jam with a lot of stuff. We're trying to get this guy to stick around with a lot of hands. So I think if you bet something like 350 on the flop, I think that's going to be pretty nice. That'll give this guy some room to shove with whatever garbage he wants. And then that'll give this guy room to call or re-raise and then put him in a horrible spot. All right. So it gets more interesting with um, this guy over calling and I flop the effective knot. 
very happy with this flop obviously it's very joy so I need to be betting on the large side the, the, the so you mentioned on the large side well I guess I'll, I'll let you talk <laughs> the flush draw and, the, and more than two straight draws it no, it's okay but I should have gone even a little bit larger like 630 640 would have been much better so similar spot as before where I think you either should have bet much bigger, something like maybe even 935, this guy's whole stack, or bet small. And I really like the bet small here because when you bet 600 or 675, it's obvious to the button that you are not folding, right? So that means that he is never, ever, ever going to try to bluff you or semi-bluff you. He's just going to fold. So that's not a good result versus this player. This guy over here, if you bet 300, he is going to stick around with a somewhat wide range, but that's fine because you're in great shape versus a wide range. There are draws available, but notice if you bet 600 or 700, you're actually not pricing this guy out with a lot of his good draws. So maybe you're making him fold out gut shots by betting bigger, but you know, whatever, let the guy have his gut shots. You can play intelligently. Like say the turn's a jack, you can just check behind on the turn or say the turn's a nine, you can check behind. You know, there are, there are cards that are somewhat bad that you can cleanly check behind on and then call any river bets. And you know which cards are good for you, like any, I guess, probably seven or lower is good enough. So this is a scenario where I think if I was you, I would have bet small or much larger. But I think I would have gone small here because of the presence of this player. You really want to give him the opportunity to raise, and then that will give this player the opportunity to re-raise. So I think that's what I would have done in this spot. So we'll continue going through this big $5 win. If you guys like this type of video, make sure you check out my interactive poker training site, pokercoaching.com, where we have a bunch of interactive quizzes where you test yourself, and then I will explain why I like the play that I like and why I do not like the plays that I do not recommend. Also, we have a monthly homework question that is usually pretty in-depth. Like, for example, in this spot, the, the quiz may be something like, you have this hand, we played it out as we did. I would explain that action. On the turn are on the flop, how much should we bet and why? And what do you expect to happen if the button calls? Which range do you expect the big blind to raise? So, you know, kind of a very big, broad question like that that will really make you think about this scenario and think it through. And as Check Razor said, he does not really like this bet size, and I completely agree. This seems like a somewhat standard half pot default bet. May even be exactly half pot. I always shy away from half pots. Maybe that's worth mentioning to Check Razor. I would take the half pop button away. Especially if you're playing on poker stars, you can change the various bet sizes. You're going to find that in most no limit hold'em scenarios, you either want to be betting somewhat small or somewhat big. So, I think my bet size buttons on my poker stars client are something like 22% pot, 38% pot, and 72% pot or something like that. Uh, those are bet sizes that will be pretty useful. Also, you can just use the mouse wheel to scroll up or down one big blind or half a big blind. I think you can set it for half a big blind. And that's going to allow you to move it up or down very easily. But I cannot remember the last time I bet exactly half pot because very often that is not the ideal bet size because it does not get value from the best hands, doesn't get maximum value from the best hands, and it still makes the absolute trash fold. So anyway, we discuss stuff like that at pokercoaching.com. Check it out and let me know what you think.